But let's get to our big story tonight, the race that's been dominating Alabama. No, not white people, I mean the Senate race. <laughs> There's been an open seat since former Senator Jeff Sessions had to vacate his treehouse to move to the White House. <laughs> so yesterday, Alabama Republicans went to the polls to choose between two candidates, Roy Moore, uh, former Alabama Chief Justice, and Luther Strange, the six foot nine former Attorney General. <laughs> now, uh, the reason a Republican primary race became national news is the same reason everything becomes national news. Mango Unchained got involved. We need each and every one of you to get a friend, to go out, get a family member, get the whole family, and bring them out to vote for Big Luther. Did people call you Big Luther before you met Trump? Yeah. You know, I brand people. I just saw him, I said, he's Big Luther. And that's cool. Wow. <laughs> what a genius. He just <laughs> saw the big guy and he was like, he's big. Oh, man. <laughs> you gotta hand it to Trump. He knows nicknames. Wow. Big Luther, uh, Little Marco, Crooked Hillary. You know, sometimes I wish he'd just give me a nickname, although I know it'll probably be Black Trevor. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, think about it, think about it. He never gives a nickname to black people, because you know it's the first thing that comes to his mind. That's how he chooses a nickname. <laughs> These are my dear friends, Black Omarosa, sorry, and B Black Ben Carson. <laughs> if only there was something else that defined you guys, I would use it, I would use it, I don't. Urban, how about that, urban? <laughs> now, Trump liked Luther, not just because he's big, but because Luther told Trump that he would vote with him on health care. And loyalty is the most important thing to Trump. Uh, well, loyalty and pretend driving trucks on the White House lawn. <laughs> and now you'd think that an Alabama Republican race with Donald Trump endorsing one of the candidates even isn't even in a race, right? Uh, because that guy's just gonna plow over everyone else. What makes the story different is that everyone on Trump's team was supporting the other guy. Moore had a constellation of anti-establishment conservative stars behind him, including Sarah Palin, Chuck Norris, and the president's former chief strategist, Steve Bannon. You can go on, Huckabee, True. Sebastian Gorka's behind him. Brexit leader Nigel Farage. Dr. Ben Carson, a member of President Trump's cabinet, offering his support of more. I'm here as a private citizen today, not as the CEO of the campaign. I haven't worn this jacket since we're on the campaign. I came to you unshaven, unkempt, in this old bomber jacket, exactly like I was on the campaign. Unshaven and unkempt? I love that Bannon treats one campaign rally as an excuse to totally let himself go. <laughs> I'm here to campaign, which is why my thighs are covered in untreated bed sores. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, Steve Bannon is the only person who looks like he's wearing a leather jacket even when he isn't. He just has that look to him. <laughs> so this was a crazy twist. President Trump endorsed one candidate, and then the human haggis, Steve Bannon, and the deplorables endorsed the other. And last night, Alabama Republicans chose which endorsement they preferred. Roy Moore has won the Alabama Senate Republican primary over Senator Luther Strange. Wow. Trump's man, Luther Strange, lost. Yeah, and he lost big. <laughs> it was a big loss. <laughs> you see, what I like to do is brand losses. That's what I do, I <laughs> give them nicknames. <laughs> big loss. <laughs> Thought of it myself. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately for Donald Trump, his supporters didn't vote for the guy he wanted them to. And uh, he handled this defeat as graciously as he handles everything in life. <laughs> Breaking news about just how upset the president is at one of his biggest political feats to date. Sources tell CNN the president went to bed embarrassed and pissed. Their words. You know, this is what I love about the English language. You can hear the same thing two completely different ways because what I heard was Donald Trump went to bed embarrassed and pissed. <laughs> And, and, and this, this is not a joke. Donald Trump was so humiliated, he even deleted a bunch of his tweets where he told people to vote for Luther Strange. <laughs> I, I know this is a small thing, but in a weird way, it's a big thing. Like, I would want a president smart enough to know that just because you delete the tweets doesn't mean that they're gone, <laughs> right? 
if someone went up to Trump and went, got your nose, I'm afraid he'd be like, my nose, my nose, my nose. <laughs> so, Roy Moore won the Alabama Republican race, which means he will almost certainly be the next senator from Alabama. And that would mean that his decisions could affect the entire country. So, we may as well get to know America's potentially newest senator. Former Alabama Chief Justice Roy Moore is a hero to the religious right. As Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, Moore defied a court order to remove a monument to the Ten Commandments inside the Supreme Court building. This is someone who's referred to Islam as a fake religion. In 2006, he opposed uh, uh, Keith Ellison taking the oath of office in Congress on the Koran. Well, I'm sorry, but this country was not founded on Mohammed. That's right. It was founded on rock and roll. Bow! Wow! Actually, actually, sorry. It was founded on a bunch of Indian graveyards. <laughs> and rock and roll. Bam! <laughs> oh, uh, and of course, racism. Just this week was accused of racially insensitive remarks. He has also said in the past that President Obama, he doesn't think, was born in this country. Now we got blacks and whites fighting. Reds and yellows fighting. I mean... I get saying we've got blacks and whites fighting, but reds and yellows? Is he running some kind of fight club for M&Ms? <laughs> What's going on here, man? So, Roy Moore has some interesting views on religion and race, but that's only the beginning. You see, getting to know this man is like peeling an onion. The deeper you go, the more you want to cry. I want to work our military strong again. I want to it freed from political correctness and social experimentation like transgender troops in our bathroom. Do you think that homosexual, <laughs> homosexuality or homosexual conduct should be illegal today? That's a yes or no question. Homosexual conduct should be, should be illegal. Do you know that bestiality, the relationship between man and beast, is prohibited in every state? Do you know that? Did I ask you about Does having that... sex with a cow? No, you didn't, but oh, here, here's, it's the or same dog? thing. Okay, if you ever have to bring up bestiality to win an argument, <laughs> you've already lost. The only thing you're proving is that you shouldn't be left alone on a farm. That's it. <laughs> I also bet that that reporter never thought he'd ever have to ask the question, did I ask you about having sex with a cow? <laughs> is that what I asked you about? <laughs> but yes, that's Roy Moore. And you might be thinking, Trevor, didn't Trump win either way? Even if his guy didn't win, Roy Moore sounds exactly like a Trump kind of guy, you know, defying the law, uh, unrefined views on race, uses religion to justify his bigotry, which is true. But one of the most important things that happened during this race, and the reason Trump is so humiliated, is that he asked his supporters to vote for someone, and instead, they voted for his opponents, which was weird. And what was weird is they said that they did it in Trump's name. When you walk in that voting booth tomorrow, a vote for Judge Roy Moore is a vote for Donald J. Trump. Now, I don't know if you see what just happened there, but this is like what happened to Bernie Sanders last year. Remember, he said to his voters, vote for Hillary. And then a lot of them went, no, we're with Bernie. And he said, yeah, I'm Bernie. <laughs> I'm telling you to vote for Hillary. <laughs> And they were like, that's not what Bernie would do. <laughs> Sit down, old man. We're with Bernie. Yeah! <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> and thanks to the race in Alabama, for the first time, we're seeing that Trumpism can exist without Trump, which is terrifying. Because now it means that even once Trump is out of the picture, his ideology, like his tweets, won't be so easy to delete.